a 17-year-old boy with a nodule on the posterior neck. And you can see this was probably taken out by a surgeon, not a dermatologist. And that may be a bit unfair, but in, in the practices I've worked in, at least surgeons tend to use cautery when they remove things. And you can see the cautery effect there, of course, in the dermis, as well as in the epidermis. And I feel that dermatologists tend to not do that um, as often, at least. Okay. You can also tell if you didn't, you have to think about this in the skin. Sometimes you can tell the skin type of a person just by looking at their normal epidermis. We have a diffuse pigmentation of the entire basal layer here. This is a dark skin patient. This patient was African American, in fact. But if you expect to be told that, a lot of times I am not given any information in the requisition sheet or the clinical history about the patient's skin type, ethnicity, race, whatever words you like to use. Um, and of all the times in medicine where race or eth ethnicity matters, in dermatopathology, it matters very much because patients with different skin types tend to get different diseases and diseases in the skin tend to look very different, whether the skin is darker pigmented or lighter pigmented. So it's actually quite important. And I feel like uh, if you're an educator, um, you might consider this that uh, of all the times they begin talking about the kind of complex issues that involve race and racial disparities and skin color and all of those things in medicine, because I think they are important topics to talk about, Dermatology and derm path are the times to begin bringing those up with our students, and they are important things that we have to be comfortable talking about. Um, and I hope that you agree with me on that, and if you don't, well, I will have to agree to disagree. So in any case, this is a lesion on a darker skin patient, although in this particular case, it wouldn't actually matter. But um, if, say, this was an older patient, it might matter because you might see this and be kind of concerned about the glassy, swirled, somewhat atypical and large keratinocytes. And you might think about squamous cell carcinoma if you're having a bad day. Um, squamous cell carcinoma, of course, would be quite rare in a darker skinned patient and definitely in a 17 year old patient of any sort, unless they have a syndrome like xeroderma pigmentosum, uh, which you can get squamous cells at a young age. So here we have a the benefit of seeing a nice excised lesion where you can tell that we have this very broad pushing bulging borders kind of similar to those seen in that trichelomoma that i just showed you and in the midst of the lesion and this one the stain on this unfortunately was a little bit dark this is this is not usually this dark blue but the h and e i remember on this particular case for some reason came out very dark because of a, of a lab problem i was having at the time uh, long ago but the key here is recognizing these swirled and whirled keratinocytes, okay? These whirling keratinocyte nodules, these are called squamous eddies. And they are round swirls and they are filled usually with keratinocytes rather than with keratin. And that's how to distinguish them from keratin pearls, which are going to be kind of like this, filled with keratin, but down in the dermis in an invasive squamous cell carcinoma. And horn pseudocysts, which are filled with loose flaky keratin and are in the epidermis in seborrheic keratosis. So I find people often get these three things confused, keratin pearls, squamous eddies, and uh, horn pseudocysts. And I do have a video on my YouTube channel about how to tell squame our keratin pearls apart from uh, horn pseudocysts if you need some examples to show your trainees but here these squamous eddies um, are very characteristic of this entity which is inverted follicular keratosis and there's another entity that it often has a squamous eddies as well and some people suggest that they may be closely related if not the same thing and that's um irritated seborrheic keratosis. So some people think that uh, inverted follicular keratosis or IFK is just an irritated seborrheic keratosis growing down into a hair follicle. But you know, seven, this patient was young and they had one of these and usually kids don't get seborrheic keratoses. So I do think there's good evidence that, that these may actually be true hair follicle tumors. And the point is it doesn't really matter, right? Both irritated seborrheic keratosis and inverted follicular keratosis are totally benign. The reason that it's good to know about these is that both of them tend to have some larger kind of more glassy keratinocytes. And, you know, keratinocyte atypia is very much in the eye of the beholder, okay? And I find that IFKs, uh, just like irritated SEBs, they often have some quote, atypia, and they tend to get kind of inflamed. And oftentimes on a shave biopsy, they're transected at the base, leaving me to wonder, particularly in an older adult, are these just squamous eddies in an IFK or an irritated seb, or am I dealing with the top of a squamous cell carcinoma? And, you know, one, you're going to leave the lesion alone, and the other, you're going to go back and do a surgery, potentially a more significant surgery if it's on the face of a patient. So the distinction can actually be pretty uh, challenging sometimes, 
and um, it, particularly on a shave biopsy. So when I see a shave and I think it looks good for an inverted follicular keratosis, I'll usually say, I think this is an inverted follicular keratosis, but there's a little atypia. I think it's reactive, but I cannot see the base of the lesion. And if this lesion keeps growing or grows back, you know, please consider doing a conservative excision so we can see the base and make sure um, that there's nothing worse there. That's how I handle those in my practice. Um, different people may choose to approach these differently. Keratinocyte lesions or lesions with squamous and keratinocytic cells are very common bread and butter lesions, but I continue to find challenging ones, particularly when it's a partial shave biopsy that I struggle with on an almost daily basis. And that's after almost nine years of practice as a board certified dermatopathologist. So if you struggle with these, you're not alone. I struggle too. It's nice when we have the whole lesion here, we can see there's no infiltrative growth. We just have all these nice uh, squamous eddies and this is inverted follicular keratosis. And sometimes you can see similar changes in trichelomoma. So trichelomoma and inverted follicular keratosis can have very closely overlapping features. And again, the name is not what's important. What's important is recognizing these are benign lesions. The last thing I will point out about this, oh, I saw it on the other side uh, here, is look, there are large dendritic pigmented melanocytes scattered throughout this lesion. So these dendritic cells are like passenger melanocytes. You can see them in um, inverted follicular keratosis. You can look at the dendrites right there. You can see them. You can see them in seborrheic keratoses. You can see them in basal cell carcinomas, particularly pigmented ones, in squamous cell carcinoma. I do feel like I tend to see more prominent pigmented dendritic melanocytes in darker skin patients. Um, in the lesions of dark skin patients, but I've seen them plenty of times in light-skinned uh, Caucasian patients as well, particularly in basals and seborrheic keratoses. And I know some people will use the name for a, a seborrheic keratosis that has abundant pigmented dendritic melanocytes. Some people use the name melanoacanthoma, but my understanding is that there's an entity in oral path that's called melanoacanthoma that's totally different. I will leave that to all of you as oral pathologists and maxillofacial pathologists to tell me differently about that. And also, I think that that name sounds awfully close to melanoma. And for something that to me is just a variant of seborrheic keratosis or, or IFK, a totally benign thing, I do not want to get anyone clinically worried about something sounding kind of similar to melanoma. So I just don't, don't call them that. I call them just IFK or seborrheic keratosis. And I point out to my residents and fellows, look at those pigmented dendritic melanocytes. And then I sign out the case and I don't even mention them, okay? But do know that increased numbers of scattered dendritic melanocytes in the midst of a uh, keratinocyte tumor or a basal cell or squam does not mean melanoma there. It just, those are passenger colonizing melanocytes that are in the midst of the lesion, okay? So in any case, I hope that that uh, is helpful to you. And this is a nice example of inverted follicular keratosis.